Hey everybody, in this video I want to talk about Craft 3, which is now in public beta, and it's been in public beta since about the end of January 2017. Because it's in public beta, that means that everybody now has access to use it, to play with it, to plan any future projects with it. Now because it's in beta, it's not quite ready for production use yet, but I did want to look at what Craft 3 has in it, what some of the changes are, and then introduce you to a few new concepts that Craft 3 introduces. So if you go to craftcms.com slash three, you will be brought to the Craft 3 landing page. Let's talk about what is sort of new big picture in Craft 3. First of all, that it is built on the Yi 2 framework. Craft 2 and 1 were built on Yi 1, and this is built on Yi 2. Practically speaking, for you day to day, this doesn't really matter. If you're developing plugins for Craft, it will change somewhat how you develop plugins, and we'll have an update on that as well. There's also a video that Ben Croker put together as part of his Craft plugin development course that shows uh, how you update your plugins for Craft 3. Another thing that we have in Craft 3 are content migrations. And this allows us then to plan how to migrate our content from one uh, system to another, and we do this via migration scripts. Craft 3 is also faster. It supports multi-sites now. Uh, there's improved localization. There's access to the service APIs in the templates. So these are APIs that you typically could only call from within a plugin, and now you have access to those right in the templates. So for something that's really quick, you could actually very quickly access the API right from the template instead of having to drop down and write a plugin for that. Craft 3 also supports PostgreSQL, and in addition to MySQL, so you have now two database systems to choose from. And again, for most people, you're probably running on a LAMP stack with Craft or, or something similar, and so MySQL is probably your default, but it also runs on Postgres now as well. A big thing that it'll definitely impact you is that Craft 3 is now installable and updatable via Composer. And in another video, I'll walk through Composer, what it is, how to use it, but this makes Craft 3, for some, a little bit easier to use, and probably for some of you, maybe a bit more complicated because you have to add another tool into your setup. So for the Craft 3 beta, Composer is the way to install it, and then, of course, once Craft releases officially, there will be a manual install available as well because uh, some people just need to do that. They don't want to use Composer. And uh, finally, there's some new image editing tools as well. And those are highlighted here on the site where you can uh, do a little bit more with images. This is a nice to have feature, especially if you're building a site where the content editors or the maintainers of the site want to manipulate their images. This is a great addition. So for me, the big changes are the content migrations, the multi-site, the access to service APIs in the templates, and the uh, composer support. Those are the big ones as far as I'm concerned. I think those are the ones that are gonna touch most people and be the most impactful day-to-day -day as you build sites with Craft 3 once it's available for production use. Right from the Craft 3 landing page, there's a big button that links off to GitHub, and that's where you can access Craft 3 and take a look at all of the code and track uh, the work that they're doing on it. There's issues that are being tracked there and uh, you can uh, access all of that as you wish. There's also some documentation for how to install Craft 3 and uh, some information on the Craft 3 plugins. There's a demo site and all that stuff as well. Now, uh, I wanna take a look at Craft 3, the dashboard, the control panel, so we can see what it looks like. So this is a copy of Craft 3 that I have running locally that I installed via Composer. And as you can see from a first look, in the current state of Craft 3 beta as it is right now, doesn't really look very much different. There is a little bit of difference here on the sidebar. We have uh, our dashboard, of course, we have our entries and users. I'm running a pro trial here, so we have all the users. And now we have the utilities section where we are, they've sort of broken up the settings into two places. So now we have utilities and settings. This is where we do things for like PHP info, 
search indexes, clear caches, uh, errors, database backup, things like that. And of course, the last one is migrations. And I'll jump into migrations in uh, detail in a future video. And then the last option is the settings. And a lot of these are probably familiar. We have general. Here's a new one for sites. So this is where we can set up multiple sites and we can give our site a name and you give it a handle, a language, whether it has its own base URL and if it does, we can say craft three third site dot dev, let's say it's at its own URL and then we can run our site off its own base URL. We can save that like so. And as you can see, we can have multiple sites all running off the same system. This is really cool and it's not like an extra thing that you have to purchase to get to get use of. You can do it right inside of Craft. All right, let's go back to the settings. Uh, most of the stuff you're familiar with, there's fields, sections, assets, globals. So all in all, the Craft 3 dashboard and control panel look pretty much the same. One of the features that is being touted by Pixel and Tonic when it comes to Craft 3 Beta is the speed. And on their landing page, they have a section called Faster in Every Way. And they say here that Craft 3 has been completely written and refactored for better performance. And they have a TTFB, which if, if you watched my web performance testing course, you know that that means time to first byte. And that Craft 3 with PHP 7, which is required for Craft 3, uh, is a 77 point to milliseconds for time to first byte. Query speed is faster as well, as is the memory usage is significantly less, according to the test that Pixel and Tonic did for Craft 3 Beta. So the takeaways for this introductory video to Craft 3 Beta is that it is faster. We have content migrations, and we also have the ability to run multiple sites and Craft 3 Beta or Craft 3 is going to be installable and updatable via Composer. And finally, there's also the ability to access the Craft APIs directly in the templates. Those are the things that you should be looking at and that should be of most use to you as you start uh, building with Craft 3 once it is out of beta. All right, so I'm gonna have some more videos where I cover some of these topics in depth, including Composer and migrations and multi-sites so we can learn about how everything works in Craft 3.